Welcome to Explain, a series of health education programs published by the Patient Education Institute, the leading provider of interactive health education. This video includes general medical information and does not replace the medical advice of your doctor or healthcare provider. If you have questions pertaining to your medical condition, ask your doctor or healthcare provider. Femoral popliteal bypass. Introduction. Clogged arteries in the legs can lead to severe pain. If the clogging results in a significant loss of blood supply to the legs, one or both legs could begin to deteriorate. If left untreated, eventually the dead or dying tissue would have to be amputated. Healthcare providers may recommend surgery for people suffering from clogged arteries. If your healthcare provider recommends surgery for you, the decision whether or not to have surgery is also yours. This program will help you understand the benefits and risks of this surgery. Anatomy Blood is carried to and from the heart by blood vessels. The blood vessels that carry blood from the heart to other organs are called arteries. Blood returns to the heart through blood vessels called veins. The inside lining of a normal artery looks smooth. Smooth arteries are common in children and young adults. The arteries can get clogged with plaque, which consists primarily of cholesterol debris. As the plaque layer thickens, blood flow to the organs is decreased. This condition is called hardening of the arteries. The heart pumps blood into a large artery known as the aorta. The aorta divides into two main arteries in the abdomen called iliac arteries. These in turn branch off into the femoral arteries, which supply most of the blood to the legs. Each femoral artery divides into other arteries known as the popliteal arteries. Symptoms and their causes When cholesterol debris clogs the femoral artery in the upper leg, blood flow to the leg is decreased. This causes the leg to hurt, especially after walking or exercising. This is known as vascular claudication. If the loss of blood supply becomes severe, the affected leg could die off. The affected leg would have to be amputated to remove the dead tissue. Sponsored by the Patient Education Institute. www.patient-education.com Over 5,000 videos and interactive tutorials. Alternative Treatments A healthy, low-fat diet may reduce plaque buildup. Refraining from smoking is essential in preventing plaque buildup. Regular exercise could help in reducing and preventing plaque buildup. Certain medications may also be appropriate. An alternative treatment using a catheter inside the artery is appropriate for some patients. This treatment is known as angioplasty. The plaque is crushed by a small balloon, which is inserted into an artery through a catheter. Special lasers or other mechanical devices inserted in an artery through a catheter are sometimes used to open the clogged segment instead of a balloon. If your arteries are significantly blocked, your healthcare provider may recommend surgery to bypass the plaque reduce the pain, and keep your leg tissue healthy. Surgical Treatment Depending on your specific operation, one or more incisions may be needed. The aim of the operation is to allow the blood to flow freely into the leg from the femoral artery. Several techniques have been devised to achieve this goal. A tube-like graft made of synthetic material can be placed to connect the femoral artery to the popliteal artery, bypassing the clogged segment. This type of graft is made of synthetic material that has been shown to be safe. Another technique uses a vein to bypass the clogged segment. This vein may be taken from another part of the body. Sometimes one of the veins that runs alongside the clogged artery can be used. At the end of the operation, 
the incision or incisions are closed. Your healthcare provider will tell you how long you are likely to stay in the healthcare facility. This depends on several factors, such as your age and medical condition. Depending on how quickly you recover, you may go home after spending two or three nights in a healthcare facility. Risks and complications. This operation is safe, but there are several possible risks and complications. These are unlikely, but they are possible. You need to know about them just in case they happen. By being informed, you may be able to help your healthcare provider detect complications early. The risks and complications include those related to anesthesia and those related to any type of surgery. Risks of general anesthesia include cut lips and chipped teeth, headache, nausea or vomiting, problems urinating, sore throat. More serious risks of general anesthesia include heart attacks, lung infections, strokes. Your anesthesiologist will discuss these risks with you and ask if you are allergic to certain medications. Blood clots in the legs can happen due to inactivity during and after the surgery. These usually show up a few days after surgery. They cause the leg to swell and hurt. Blood clots can become dislodged from the leg and go to the lungs, where they will cause shortness of breath, chest pain, and possibly death. Sometimes the shortness of breath can happen without warning. It is important to let your healthcare providers know if any of these symptoms happen. Getting out of bed shortly after surgery may help decrease the risk of blood clots in the legs. Some of the risks are seen in any type of surgery. These include 1. Infection deep in the tissue or at the skin level. 2. Bleeding either during or after the operation. 3. Skin scars that may be painful or ugly. Other risks and complications are related specifically to this surgery. These, again, are rare, but it is important to know about them. There is the possibility of the graft clogging again in the future. The nerves going to the leg could be damaged, leading to paralysis and decreased sensation. This condition could be permanent. After the surgery your healthcare provider may recommend a healthy, low-fat, or low-salt diet. Exercising moderately and not smoking are also helpful in keeping the arteries from clogging again. Your healthcare provider will tell you how long it will take before your incisions are completely healed and when you can go back to work. This depends on your age, type of work, and medical condition, as well as other factors. If you like this video, please like and share. For similar videos, subscribe to our channel. Summary Clogged popliteal or femoral arteries can cause pain and deterioration of the legs to the point where they need to be amputated. If your arteries are significantly blocked, your healthcare provider may recommend surgery to bypass the plaque, reduce the pain, and keep your leg tissue healthy. Bypassing the clogged arteries in the upper leg using a graft is helpful in reducing pain and preventing the need for leg amputation. The aim of the operation is to allow blood to flow freely into the leg from the femoral artery. A tube-like graft made of synthetic material can be placed to connect the femoral artery to the popliteal artery, bypassing the clogged segment. Another technique uses a vein to bypass the clogged segment. This vein may be taken from another part of the body. Sometimes one of the veins that runs alongside the clogged artery can be used. This operation is safe with good results, but complications may happen. Knowing about them will help you detect them early if they happen. Thank you for using Explain.